Now, I totally get that you guys may be too young to have watched the most legendary movie of all time, Gladiator. But do yourself a favor, favor if your parents allow you, go and watch Gladiator. And if you search for the movie Gladiator in your Google search bar, and you'll see some images come up of Russell Crow standing there in his armor. He's got his sword in his hand and across his chest is this beautifully decorated breastplate. And this piece of defensive armor is essential to protect his vital organs from fiery arrows and from swords and from hard donuts. Anyway, we, we've established that we're in a battle, in a spiritual royale against Satan. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 11 says, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Like Russell Crowe, we also need armor to protect our vital organs. And so today I want us to answer three questions. Firstly, how does our enemy Satan attack our vital organs? Secondly, what piece of armor do we need to protect our vital organs? And thirdly, how do we put this armor on? So firstly, how does Satan actually go about attacking our vital organs? Well, there's this really cool proverb in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. It tells us that our hearts are the wellspring of life and that we need to guard or protect our hearts. In my own life, when Satan attacks my heart, what he does is he comes to me with accusations. He accuses me at the very core of who I am. He attacks my identity. He tells me things like, hey, Dave, you're useless. You're a failure. You're worthless. You're too sinful to be a Christian. You're too sinful to be loved by God. You should be further along by now. He tells me such horrible things about myself that there are times when I actually get depressed. I really start to believe these things that he says about me. Hey, do you ever feel that way? Well, let's get to our second question. How do we protect our hearts? What, what kind of armor do we need to protect the wellspring of life. In Ephesians chapter 6 verse 14 it says, Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist. And last week Amy unpacked this for us. You see, we need to protect ourselves from lies by countering lies with truth. We need to soak ourselves in the word of God in the Bible, which is the counsel of God's truth. We need to get that truth deep inside of us. So firstly, that we can recognize the lies of the enemy. And secondly, so that when they come, we have truth to fight back and counter those lies. One of the greatest truths that we need to believe as Christians is that we are righteous. Look at just the next part of this verse. Paul tells us that we need the breastplate of righteousness in place. Well, we know what a breastplate is, but what is righteousness? What is this, this big kind of term? Well, essentially, it is right standing with God. It means to be right with God. In other words, th there is some truth to, to kind of what Satan says about us being unworthy and, and, and guilty and, you know, just a, a failure in God's eyes. That, those are true things. But here's the thing. God doesn't label us if we are in Christ like that. If we're in Jesus, those things that Satan says to us are not true anymore because God sent a substitute in our place. God took initiative because of his love for us and he sent 
Jesus as a substitute. So Jesus takes on all of those things that are true about us. We're sinful. We're not worthy. We don't deserve God. We deserve hell. Yes, Jesus takes on the punishment. And instead, we get given his status as perfect in God's sight, as right with God. We become righteous in God. And so when Satan comes with his accusations of of telling us that we're not worthy, we can say, yes, but actually in Christ, I have a breastplate of righteousness because I am right with God. This brings us to our third question. How do we actually go about taking this breastplate of righteousness and putting it on ourselves? And to answer this question, let me just kind of answer it from my own life. Well, the first thing that that I do is I soak myself in truths about who I am in Christ. So I will read the Bible. I'll read verses like Romans 8 verse 1. There is therefore no more condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Or 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21 that God made him, Jesus, who had no sin to be sin for us so that in Jesus we, me, might become the righteousness of God. I will read those verses over and over again until I believe them in my core. And then when I sense that Satan is coming with accusatory lies, telling me that I I suck, that I'm not worthy, that I'm just the worst person in the world, I'll say, okay, Satan. Well, that's not what the Bible says about me because in Jesus, God says I'm right. God says I am worthy. God says he loves me. God says he forgives me. And even if kind of two minutes later, the same accusation comes, I'll go back to to God and I'll say, this is what the devil is saying of me, but this is what you say of me, Lord. I practice putting on the righteousness of God, standing against the lies of the enemy. I believe that the devil uh, is, obviously he's called the father of lies in, in, in scripture, but I believe that one of his sneakiest tactics is to accuse the children of God. And he tells us lies about ourselves, but he, he sugarcoats them. He makes them sound so convincing and believable. We see this with Eve in the Garden of Eden. He comes to Eve and said, did God not say? God just spoken to her, but still she was able to, to believe this lie of Satan and act upon it. And I think some of you guys are in that place. You find it very, very difficult to distinguish between lies and truth about who you really are. And for some of you, Satan's lies are so ingrained in you that that's just, it's just part of the way you live. You believe you're terrible. You believe you're unworthy. You believe you're too sinful for God. You believe he could never forgive you for what you've done. But I want to tell you today as your pastor that it is not true. That in Jesus, it is not true. And I want to encourage you and challenge you to wake up every morning and to soak yourself in truth. Open the Bible and learn to recognize God's voice over your life and then learn to choose it in the face of the lies of Satan. Keep putting on the breastplate of your righteousness in God. By the way, if you're listening to this devotion, this Tuesday truth, and you feel like you are not in Christ, you feel condemned and unworthy, but Jesus is far away, you don't know who he is and you don't know what he's done for you. I want to say to you that the opportunity is there now. The invitation is there now for you to come before God, to confess how you feel, to confess your sin and to believe in what Jesus has done for you, to turn away from your old life, to repent and to be given a new status right with God. And then the breastplate of righteousness will be yours to put on too. Let's put on that breastplate together this week. God bless you.